My name is Christian von Königsegg. For half of my life, I've been on the quest to be a leader in the hypercar industry, utilizing Swedish design combined with visionary technical solutions. The application process is really the biggest challenge we have when it comes to developing our cars to be able to register them for road use around the world. Actually we sell and register cars pretty much in every country on the planet. Homologation is uh, all the process that you have to do before being able to register the car in each country where you want to sell the car. So we have to fulfill all the regulations and uh, directives that any country has. So I'm the, in charge of getting all that test done and submit all this information to the countries. These rules, meaning the homologation rules, they're set up really for big car companies and they have been refined over the last hundred years more or less. Uh, and coming in as a new player and as a small company into this picture, when everything is geared to high volume and super complex methodologies and tests, it's really, really difficult. Yeah, um, regular manufacturers, they have big uh, homologation departments with between 50 and 100 people. I'm here alone with all my co-workers. But yeah, uh, it's a lot of job to, for a small volume manufacturer to, to take care of all the different regulations in all over the world. Homologation can be divided in three fields, active safety, passive safety and emissions. So active safety, everything that happens before you crash, so brakes, lights, rear view mirrors. Passive safety is everything that happens after you crash, so seat belts, uh, airbags, uh, flammability, for example, and emissions, of course, is what uh, the emissions uh, pollutant gases the car does. This process is almost impossible for a small company to cope with. Uh, I think more or less we spend 60% of our development budget the last few years just to be able to do this. It means for any other, let's say, startup, sports car company, if they're not backed by a huge uh, corporation or, or by really, really wealthy long-term investors, it's almost impossible, I would think. We, we've been doing homologation for the, for the last uh, 15 years. We, we even had to crash test our first production car in the year 2000. It was easier regulation back then than it's now, but it meant we kind of learned how to do it step by step. Even though we're small and even though we have limited resources, we found ways. For America, there is no exemptions for car manufacturer, so we have to fulfill the same requirements as any other regular car manufacturer. And for Europe, we are exempt for a few of them, but not for the important ones. So we have to fulfill also with all the crashes, frontal crash, lateral crash, rear crash, and exactly the same emissions limits like a regular manufacturer. For example, uh, fulfilling the American regulations, it grants you also that you fulfill the Canadian regulations, so it's just paperwork. But uh, in Europe, some of the Asian countries uh, have the same requirements that Europe, so it means that you can reuse this test for the Asian countries. For example, in, uh, in Europe, you have 64 different regulations for small volume manufacturers and they are completely different from the American ones. So it means that fulfilling the European ones, uh, you cannot reuse this test, this crash test, for example, for America, because the, the limits and the conditions of the tests are different. So it means you have to perform crash tests for Europe and then crash again the car regarding the American regulations. If you fulfill with the American and uh, European regulations, you have almost all the world covered. For example, for the Gulf countries, they have one extra test, which consists in sanding the radiator. This regulation is no other place in the world, but the rest, you can use American and European standards. So the car behind me here, 
is actually the red show car we had at Geneva in 2016. We had it for showcasing to uh, some customers and journalists and we did some, let's say, fair weather driving when it looked really nice. And then it went into its uh, needed position of becoming a hardcore test car. So we unscrewed, unbolted the nice uh, uh, candy apple red uh, uh, bodywork and put on this rough raw, just raw carbon panels. And it's been down in Spain for the last 10 months going through many, many different tests. Uh, uh, stability control test, brake test, uh, uh, puncture test, wheel test, uh, abuse, abuse tests, uh, anything we could throw at it. And it came home in one piece. Uh, we have some small tests left to do with it, but uh, soon we're building it back to a beautiful looking uh, factory test car with the latest specification.